In this video, we're looking at what I believe is the easiest method for creating dependent data validation lists. There's no tricky indirects, no tricky cell functions. This is a simple method using range functions. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here's the scenario. We have a column of different styles of shoe and each shoe has a different type of toe, but not every toe is available for every shoe. We also have colors and every color is not available for every toe and shoe combination. So what we want to do is to create dependent drop-down lists that only display the relevant items based on the user's previous selections. Now in this example, we're building everything on one sheet. In reality, it's likely that you'll have your drop-down list and your source on different sheets, but having everything on a single sheet just makes it easier to demonstrate. Right, now let's head over into Excel and start building our formulas. For this method, we want to create a separate dynamic range for each column. If our data is already in the correct order, we can simply use table column references for each column. However, in this scenario, our data is in a random order. Therefore, we need to sort the data in each column. Now, to get separate columns, we're going to use the choose cols function. Then, for the array argument, we will use the sort function, and that will use our table. We then want to sort on the shoe, toe, and color columns. So as an array, we will provide one, comma, two, comma, three in curly brackets. This will give us a multi-level sort. For the shoe column, we want to return the first column. So I will enter one as the col num one argument. Then when we calculate, we get the shoes in ascending order. Next, I'll copy the formula into cell G6 and change the col num one argument to two. That now returns the toe column in ascending order inside the shoe column. Now let's copy the formula into H6 and we want the col num one to be column three. That now gets us the color column sorted based on the toe and shoe columns. That's got our data ready. Now let's go ahead and start building the data validation lists. The first data validation list is easy. From the ribbon, I'll click data and then data validation. In the allow dropdown, I will select list. Then for the source, we're going to use cell F6. Excel has already applied the dollar signs, but we need to press the hash to make sure that we get the full spill range. Then we can click OK. We now have our first data validation list, which displays the three styles of shoe. From that list, I'm going to select Derby. Inside the data validation list, we can use a range or a formula which returns a range. Now, the take and drop functions do exactly that. They don't just return the values, they also return the ranges that those values relate to. So if we use take and drop on a range, we can then use that inside a data validation list. And that's what we're about to do. Let's start by calculating the values that we want to place inside the data validation list. In cell L6, we'll use the take function. For the array, we want to use the cell G6 and we need to press F4 to apply the dollar signs. Then we also want to press hash to get the entire spill range. Initially, we want to take all the rows above the last instance of the shoe type. We can find the position of the last instance using the X match function. We want to look up the value in K6 from the range in F6. I'll press F4 to lock in the dollar sign and also press hash to get the spill range. For the match mode, we want an exact match, which is zero. Then for the search mode, we want to search from last to first, which is minus one. We can then close those functions and calculate, and that gives us all of the toes above the last instance of our shoe of Derby. Next, we want to use the drop function to remove the rows above the first instance of Derby. At the start of the formula, I'll enter drop. Then for the rows argument, we're going to use the X match function again. We want to look up the value in K6 and we want to look that up from F6. I'll lock in the dollar signs and get the spill range. Derby is in the third row, but we only want to remove the first two rows, which means we need to minus one from the result of the X match. 
We can then close the drop and calculate, and it gives us only the toes that relate to the Derby shoe. Okay, now let's add this formula to our data validation list. I'm going to copy the entire formula, and then from the data ribbon, I'll click data validation. In the allow dropdown, I will select list, and then I'm going to paste the formula into the source field. Then I can click OK. The data validation list now displays only the toes that relate to the Derby shoe. If we change Derby to Chelsea boot, we now see only the toes which relate to the Chelsea boot. So that's a dependent dropdown list, but what if we want a dependent, dependent dropdown list where the color is based on the shoe and also the toe? Well, that's what we're going to apply next. If you're watching this video, then you're probably trying to get better at Excel, where we've got exactly what you need in our training academy. So head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our courses, our tools, our templates, our ebook library, our live events, our Q and A sessions, and much, much more. This is the place where we help people like you to save huge amounts of time with Excel. The color is dependent on the toe and also the shoe. So we need to change our formula. I'll paste the previously copied formula into cell M6, and now we can make the relevant changes. Rather than G6 hash, which is the toe column, we want to return the values from H6 hash, which is the color column. Next, in the X match function, we need to look up the shoe and also the toe. So after our lookup value, we're going to add an ampersand, a hyphen in double quotes, another ampersand, and then select cell L6. We need to apply the same changes to the lookup array. So after F6, I'll enter ampersand, then a hyphen in double quotes, then an ampersand, and select cell G6. We need to lock in those cell references and get the spill range. We've applied those changes to the first X match. We now need to apply them to the second X match. I will copy that section of the formula and then paste it into the second X match. Now, when we calculate, we get only the colors that are available for the shoe and toe combination. Okay, now let's copy that formula and use it in the data validation list. In the allow dropdown, I will select list and then I will paste the function into the source box and click okay. And there you can see that we have a data validation list which is dependent on the shoe and the toe. I'll now select the cells with the data validation and apply that to the entire range. In the first column, if I select Oxford, I can select the toes which relate to the Oxford shoe. Then in the final column, it displays the colors. You can see we only have a single color for that shoe and toe. But if we change the toe type, we can then come back to the color and it displays two possible colors. And that's it. That's how we can create multi-level dependent drop-down lists. If you learned something in this video, then why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And once you've done that, click there. That's the next awesome Excel video that you should watch. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.